I'm Angela and this is Parisian Farm Girl. Today we are going to bake a beautiful loaf of bread. You can find the original recipe in my cookbook from France to the Farm, which is available on Amazon. I think you should give this video a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe if you haven't and follow me over on Instagram because that's where you and I can hang out every day. This is it, this is my crusty country loaf, the one you've been asking for, this loaf you've seen in so many videos here on the Parisian Farm Girl channel, and I'd love to share with you how to bake it. It's so easy. I think if you are a bread baking beginner, this is the perfect first step into the world of baking bread. We're not gonna use a sourdough starter today. We're not going to use a food scale. Here's what you're going to need. Flour, salt, water, and yeast. And as for equipment, I love to have a dough scraper. Of course, you will need some measuring tools. You'll want to have parchment paper. I think this makes it really easy to handle your dough and a Dutch oven. Now this is the key to the recipe. I'll share why in a little while. I have my Dutch oven here. You can see it's used and abused. I expose it to some very high temperatures. If you don't have a Dutch oven, don't panic. You can still bake bread today. Just use a roasting pan, anything you have that can handle the high temps and has a lid. You want to start this recipe the night before. That's what I suggest. We're looking at a 12 to 18 hour ferment and then a two hour rise the following day. So you'll start with six cups of flour. You can divide this recipe in half, but I say if you're gonna bake a loaf of bread, bake a loaf of bread, something that you can make a big, beautiful sandwich out of. So six cups of flour. I use uh, King Arthur Organic for this recipe. We have six cups of flour and we are going to use a tablespoon of yeast. I keep my yeast in a ball jar and I store it in the refrigerator. So you, of course, can use a measuring spoon and a teaspoon and a half of salt. Don't forget the salt. After you have that all mixed together, just take a fork and stir it up. And what you want to do is make sure that you get everything on the bottom of the bowl mixed in. It's gonna look very shaggy. It's going to look like nothing's going to become of it. That's okay. Just make sure you get all the flour at the bottom mixed in. Otherwise, tomorrow morning you'll wake up to this beautiful, slightly fermented dough, and on the bottom will be all these flour crumbles. So we don't want that. If it happens your first few times, you will get the hang of it and you'll have flour crumbles no more. So we have this saran wrap left over from when we butchered our pigs, but it's really not uh, the most earth friendly choice. So if you can find those reusable covers, that's fantastic. But this is going to sit covered in saran wrap overnight in a nice warm spot. My kitchen is pretty cold, so since the oven has been running during the day, I typically put this at the back of the oven where it's a little bit warmer. It needs 12 to 18 hours to ferment. So it's really nice to start this loaf right before you make dinner. It can sit all night and then you can get started on it first thing the next morning. What we have here is a beautiful dough that has been fermenting all night long. <coughs> Just give it a little work around and let it sit under plastic. for 15 minutes. Our bread has been under saran wrap for about 15 minutes. So just take a little flour and your dough scraper. Flour your work surface and one easy step. Just 
going to press it into a slight rectangle. Fold it over, fold it over, turn it over on its back or on its bum, turn it a few times, and we're going to set it on some parchment paper to do its final rise. This just makes it really, really easy to put it in the oven. So I grab my loaf, and if it got a little wonky, just give it a turn. No, no fuss. And now this beautiful, beautiful loaf is going to sit here for two hours. 45 minutes into that two hours, turn your oven up as high as it will go, and put your Dutch oven inside. And that's how we're gonna get the gorgeous crust on this loaf of bread because we're mimicking a commercial oven. We're mimicking a bread oven by creating an oven within an oven. So we're providing maximum heat and humidity for the loaf. Our beautiful dough has been proofing. That's its final rise for the last two hours. The oven has been on for 45 minutes. Now it's time to bake some bread. I leave this loaf in for about 30 minutes and then I check on it. It's starting to turn golden brown. I'll take the lid off and leave it in for a few more minutes. When you knock on your loaf, you want it to sound hollow. That's a sign that it's done. If you can resist, be sure to let it rest for a while before cutting into it. This looks so delicious. It's still a little bit warm. It's got a beautiful crumb. I think you're going to love this recipe. Now, if you'd like me to do a little bit more cooking for you, be sure to mention that in the comments. And if you'd like some more kitchen inspiration, check out this video right here. And when you're done, check out this one right here and be sure to subscribe. A bientôt.